In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Well, again, Happy Mother's Day. Today we celebrate Mother's Day to all the wonderful moms out there and all the wonderful women who show the love of moms. Today we celebrate all that moms have done for us and in truth is an impossible task. There's no way we can ever pay back all that moms have given to us, so thank you very much. But we will try. We will try by buying gifts, flowers, cards, maybe a lunch, maybe breakfast that was made for you this morning. But we will try. For some of us, we, this is a day of remembrance. And for some of us that are fortunate, our moms are still with us. And for some, I know that some mothers are no longer with us. But it doesn't mean that we can't celebrate them and remember them and know all that they have done for us. Today I'll be calling my mother to celebrate with her as well as celebrating watching Karen be a wonderful mom to our girls. What we are really celebrating today is the love of moms. What we're truly celebrating beyond that is love itself. The love of moms, they give us so much. They gave us love. They gave us protection. They gave us teachings such as life lessons, life skills, manners how to treat others, how to love others. They comfort us. They took care of us when we scraped our knees on the road. They took care of us when we had broken hearts. They picked us up. They dust us off. And they had our backs even when the world felt like it was against us. But then there, does, there comes the day. There comes the day when we all had to grow up. When we had to leave the nest. We have to go into the world and soon we have to take the things that we've learned and apply them to the world and society. But even though we go into the world, it doesn't mean that mom isn't with us. I know for me, just because I can't see my mom because she lives in Charleston, doesn't mean that she isn't with me all the time, taking the things that she taught me with me. I can remember the day that I left home. It seemed like yesterday, but obviously it wasn't. But I can remember leaving home, and I remember going upstairs, and as I'm putting tape on the boxes and getting everything to put into my car, Mom was sitting giving me advice, giving me life advice about everything. It was like she had this one-hour timetable to give me all the advice she possibly could, even though she did before and she did after. But it was, you remember to do this, remember to do that, remember your socks, remember this. And I remember her just telling me all the things I needed to do. Things I needed for my apartment. Making sure that I study. Remember, you, got, you need to study. And of course, she said, make sure you get plenty of sleep. Always about the sleep. To this very day, I'm almost embarrassed to say, I still get that lecture. And as I was packing my car and going up and down the stairs, she was actually following me. And still continuing to tell me all the things that I needed to do and still that advice. And then as I left, I remember waving out of my car to her, and she was waving back, but I could see on her face that she was praying for me. She was praying. She was being a mom. I took all that she taught me in that car that day. She taught me well, and she still teaches me, and she still gives me advice. As a good mom or parent, we all know that all we can do for our children is to show them love. Is to truly show them love. We also need to be an example. All we can do is teach them. All we can do is teach them to be a good person, to be honest, to love their God, and to help others. Then after we've given everything we've given, or have to give, we do have to let them go into the world. It is the hardest moment. Karen and I are dealing with that right now. But it's also the proudest moment when you see all of your accomplishment in your child as they walk out as an adult. And it's the love that is the foundation of all of that as you walk, watch them leave. It's a mother's love that we see in the gospel today. What we're going to see is the exact scenario I just talked about. 
we see Jesus as he's talking to his disciples at the table. It's right before he is about to ascend. And he is teaching his disciples everything he can. It's almost like he has this one hour timetable that he has to tell them everything that he knows. And he's telling them everything. All the things they're going to have to be careful of and all the advice. Teaching them, I am the vine, you are the branches. You need to abide in me as I abide in you. You need to be with God. You need to love one another. You need to love the world. He goes on to give them every bit of information he can. And when he's finally done walking with them and talking as they are packing up soon, he prays for them. Soon he will ascend into heaven so that he can be and so he can send the Holy Spirit to keep giving us advice and helping the disciples. Soon it will be the disciples that will be leaving home. It'll soon be the disciples at Pentecost that will suddenly have to pack up and head out into the world. So Jesus teaches them all the advice that he can give. And then, like mom, Jesus prays for his disciples. We hear in the gospel today as Jesus is praying. He says, I've made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. God has given those disciples to him. They were yours and you gave them to me and they have kept your word. All mine are yours and all yours are mine. And I have been glorified in them. Holy Father, protect them in your name that they may be one as we are one body of Christ. I speak these things in the world so that their joy may be complete in themselves. What Jesus wants for His disciples is He wants them to know that they are loved and loved like unlike anything else. Knowing that they are loved by God. He wants them to be protected from the evil one of this world. He wants them to abide in Him as He abides in them like a vine and branches. He wants them to share God's love with the world and share their love with each other that they may be one. Again, the body of Christ. They need to be one because that's where love is. Why? So their joy may be complete. So their joy may be complete. Isn't that like the love of a mom? Isn't that why moms work so hard to make sure their children have all that they can? Teaching them everything, trying to give them the very best they can possibly provide for, getting them ready for the world. Why? So as adults, their joy will be complete. Isn't that what they want to see? Isn't it what we want to see for our children? For them to have joy. Jesus knows to truly be happy. To be one of his disciples, we need to abide in Jesus' love because he connects us to God himself. And when we become who we really are called to be, and when we do what we're really called to be, it will bring us to true joy in life. And that's what God wants for each and every one of you. Jesus in his prayer is calling them to love. He is calling them to love and to have that love between God and Christ and bringing us into that ultimate love. He wants them to have that love because he knows that God, it connects them to God himself. He also wants unity. Again, he wants unity with them, with God, with the world and each other, that they may be one. So again, their joy may be complete. The disciples' job will be go to spread the kingdom of God throughout the world. They will be sharing the word of God. They'll be by sharing the experience of God, by bringing people to God, by showing love. And they need to do this by being unity in one with Christ, abiding in Him and with one another. So what about us? Do we show love in the world? Do we actually share the love of God with the world? Do we share the love of God with each other? We can understand the strength of a mother's love. I think we have all witnessed our, uh, and seen great moms and the things that they have done for us. 
We know a mother's love can be strong. We know a mother's love is selfless. We know a mother's love is unconditional. And we know a mother's love is giving. But in all that we understand of a mother's love, especially on a day like this, imagine the love of God. Imagine the love of God beyond our comprehension. The one who is love. The one who gives us love through the Spirit. But in all we can understand of a mother's love, imagine God's love at all giving, all un unconditional. The one who gave us life. The one who walks with us. The one who guides us. The one who picks us up when we fall. And we, like the disciples, are supposed to share that love with the world and one another. This incredible love of God. And as we are now coming to the end of our Easter season, believe it or not, this is the last Sunday of Easter, we need to understand the true love, true love of the resurrection. That Jesus died for each and every one of us so that we may be with Him, so that our joy may be complete and that we love one another. We need to understand that love of God and we need to mimic it. We need to understand why Jesus died for us because of the love of God. We need to understand that we now have life through Christ, the most ultimate gift that any of us can receive. <coughs> and when we understand the unlimited amount of unceasing love that God has for us, it is then that we understand we don't need to hoard it, but instead we need to share God's love with everyone we meet. We need to share God's love with all. And we need to share this to the world and one another as we approach Pentecost next week. That's right, Pentecost is already going to be next week. This is why we are working so hard to share Christ's love with our community and one another here at Holy Trinity. This is why we need to share our story with one another, to be there for one another, to pick up from um, one another. This is next year we talked about will be the year of evangelism, and it should not be a bad word, but it should be an exciting word. The word evangelism is about teaching. It's about giving our story and sharing our story with us in the love of God with each other. Our roots need to be strong as we journey into Pentecost. Our roots need to be strong in Christ, and they need to be strong in each other. We need to reach out to each other in our faith. As we grow stronger together, we grow stronger in our individual life faith or faith life. The modern Christian martyr Dietrich Bonhoeffer says in his book, Life Together, these words about the importance of Christian fellowship and rubbing elbows with one another as we share ourselves in the community of faith. On page 23 of his book, he says, God has will that we should seek and find his living word in the witness of a brother and sister, in the mouth of man and woman. Therefore, the Christian needs another Christian to speak God's word to him. He needs him again and again and again as he becomes uncertain or discouraged. For by himself, he cannot help himself without lying the truth. Bonhoeffer talks about my faith helping your faith. He's talking about your faith helping my faith. He's talking about your faith helping one another's faith as we tell the story. We need to hear your faith story. We need to hear your faith during the good times as well as the bad. It helps pick each of us up in showing that mother's love to each other. As we need to help our community also in giving our story of giving of ourselves and giving our resources to those in need. In other words, we need to show that love of mom to the world the way Jesus shows his love to us every single day. Like a mother's love, we need to abide in Jesus. Why? He loves us. 
And as Jesus said in Matthew, how often I wanted to gather your children together, just as a hen gathers her chicks under her wing. Jesus is talking about a mother's love. Today we celebrate Mother's Day. Today we celebrate the love of mom. Today we celebrate women who give the love of moms. Today we celebrate the one who gives us that love, Jesus Christ. And today we begin to prepare ourselves for Pentecost. And there we prepare ourselves for next week as we take our love here at Holy Trinity and we need to take that unconditional love of God as we walk out through those doors at Pentecost, giving and reaching out to so many people in our community and loving them, loving them the way Christ loves us. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's love each other and let us love our community. Happy Mother's Day. Amen. Amen.